And so we can even see in the church where people have allowed the world uh, to get in the church. In other words, they are not allowing their morals to align themselves with the word of God. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources so that you can help identify those that are around you that are struggling with life debilitating addictions. We work with addicts every day. And Brother A, we have really been diving in. Of course, we always are talking about relapse prevention because that's really important right. and very important topic. But our subtopic that we've really been talking about last few podcasts is people, places, and things. Correct. And we're going to continue talking about that today. So where do we go? Because like I said, this is like the third or fourth podcast we've talked about this. Correct. Um, where do we go from what we haven't talked about in the previous ones? Well, I, I mean, I, I think I think we can continue to talk about people, places, and things because it plays such an, a, a significant role in relapse prevention. Uh, I know for myself personally, uh, it was me changing people, places, and things that have led to my success in my recovery. And I, and I think that's that's the thing that most recovering addicts struggle to avoid. Right. Uh, people, places, and things. The, the old people, the old places, and the old things. But the most important aspect of that are, 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 are the people. Right. Are the people because the people we choose to associate with dictate the places we go and the things we end up doing. Right. Now, of course, in every environment, we hadn't really, I mean, I think we've talked significantly about uh, uh, places uh, uh, and things to some extent, but, but the places we go, every place we go, any environment you go, uh, there are good people. Right. And there are evil people. Right. Uh, and when I say evil, uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't know how many people may define evil, but evil really uh, has to do with moral corruptness. Okay. Um, and if you are associating with people consistently who are morally corrupt, it's going to impact who you are, uh, even if you are a person that that really believes that having good morals are are are, are right, right. Uh, uh, you, you, your morals will end up being corrupt. Matter of fact, it, the, the scripture in First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse thirty three says this. It says, "Do not be deceived." First of all, it said, "Don't be deceived. Don't think you can uh, hang around with certain people uh, and and it won't change you." But it says. Do, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Okay, right. In other words, if I'm hanging around with morally corrupt people, it's going to impact what the things I do. Right. So whatever environment you choose to go in, you have a responsibility to uh, uh, identify what people you're going to associate with. Right. That's, that's very important. Um, whether it's on your job uh, or whether it's uh, at some uh, function of sort, right. event of sort that you're attending, uh, you still have to choose the people you associate with. So I've been right. in the in the in the uh, uh, United States Navy Reserves now uh, over 19 years, right. and I've had to be very selective about the people in the military, right. That I choose to associate with, that I choose to spend time around, um, because they're in the military doesn't mean that they have good morals, right? Mm. Mm. Um, and so some of some I've come across some people that, in my opinion, from my perspective, and they may not think so uh, uh, of themselves, but I, I see them as morally corrupt, right? And so I choose not to associate with them. And you can see that not even just in the military. <laughs> scary thing is you can even see that in church correct and that's what's even scarier because I mean, sometimes when especially for if somebody's been struggling it's like well i've got to get into church and mm -hmm. then they even start hanging out with a bad bad crowd or wrong crowd in church it could have the same effect in some aspects correct well you know the you know bible says we're in the world but we're not of the world right and so we can even see in the church where people have allowed the world 
uh, to get in the church. In other words, they are not allowing their morals to align themselves with the word of God. Right. Uh, that's what really dictates my moral. It doesn't mean that I'm special or good or, you know, no one's good but God, right? Right. But I'm working every day to align my morals with the word of God. Right. Uh, I want my life, my, my the, what I do, how I think to be aligned with what God's word says. If I'm associating with people, even in the church, that are not working mm -hmm. to do the same thing, then I can uh, I can allow myself to end up uh, compromising right. what I know is right from a biblical perspective. Right. And, and, and so that's important to keep 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 yourself focused on. Right. And that's just so important. And in, when we're talking about the places and people, I've talked to a lot of our interns here actually in the program, and some of them have actually said, you know, I wanted to become an intern because I needed more of this because I, I don't want to put myself at this time into that environment. Right. So they're, they're trying, and that's something that as you go through recovery, that you need to learn how to protect yourself. Correct. And, correct. That's, and that's the maturity as you're going through that to realize, you know what? I need to be. I need to make sure that I am surrounding myself Correct. right now. I'm just coming out of this, and I need to make sure I'm surrounding myself with the positive influence right. in that aspect of it. And I just really respect the students, the interns, and those that have come on staff that have realized that here um, at our facility. Yeah, right. And you know, and the Bible says, "Guard your heart." Right. Guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Uh, so, how do I guard my heart? When it's saying guard your heart, it's also saying guard uh, your morals, right. guard okay. your values, okay. guard what's important to you. And the most important thing for each of us as believers should be our relationship with the Lord. Right. Right. So so how do we guard that? We guard that by choosing uh, who we associate with, who we allow to speak into our lives and, 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 when, and, you know, when you hear that term, when you hear people say speak into your life, you think that the person is 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 necessarily being directly trying to communicate things right. to you. But indirectly, we're you know, things are being communicated to us all the times if we choose to allow ourselves to be subjected to certain people in certain environments. Right. Um, you know, I've been in situations to where they were having certain conversations, whether it was been in the military or otherwise, that didn't agree with me from a spiritual standpoint, from a biblical standpoint, right. that I had to remove myself. Okay. That I would literally, and I was just sharing with a couple of the guys in Adult and Teen Challenge the other day, that I would literally walk away from the conversation. It could be simply me and that person right, having a conversation, and that conversation or that person begins to allow that convo that conversation to take a turn in a in a direction from a moral standpoint that I didn't agree with and I would remove myself I would end that conversation why because uh, uh what 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 did the the, the scripture just read says evil company right will corrupt good manners now I'm not calling that person evil right but I'm saying what that the, the conversation, what they're allowing uh, to to come out of their mouth is 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 not in line biblically. Right. Uh, so therefore, I can't I can't allow myself to be subjected to it. I have to make a decision about whether I will continue uh, that conversation. I receive I'll get uh, texts and uh, you know people like to send different things. You know, I, I had a a military guy that I know yesterday, uh, he's deployed to the same place I was deployed right. to in Bahrain that uh, sent a video. There's another chief that I know over there, that, and apparently they were drinking and partying, he, and he took a video clip of it and decided to send it to me. Not <laughs> sure why he, right. you know, he would send it to me. Uh, I don't know what I've indicated to him that would make him think it was okay to send it to to me but he did and and not thinking i went ahead and opened it up and, uh, and immediately when i played it i hit profanity and i immediately shut it off and deleted it and said yeah and so uh you know a little while later i texted him i said well i see you've uh connected with this other chief this other individual i said please don't send me those videos 
Right. You know, I'm not interested in uh, that type of communication. Right. Why? Because I have to guard my heart. Right. Because out of it flows the issues of of life. Right. Um, And I don't know that many recovering addicts, particularly even those who are 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 in Christ centered recovery, understand how important that is. Right. Well, it's especially if it's just something new to them too, and they don't understand that they have to be careful a lot of times with all this because they just they've been in the world, they've been doing running all this, doing the stuff, and they don't realize how those little things yeah to what may be little to some people end up being big things to others right and it's just getting just could be those triggers and different aspect of that that's correct they don't realize how susceptible they are to being uh uh, uh pulled back into things and activity that they, they they've been delivered from right <coughs> excuse me Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to this and you're realizing maybe you are struggling or you know somebody that's struggling that maybe getting pulled back into different things, maybe being realizing that you're starting to be at the wrong place, wrong people, and it's you're starting to realize that or you're seeing somebody there, you know, reach out for help. Uh, you can give us a call here at Teen Challenge at 833-462-8286 or you can find us on the web at atctn.org and there is a button there that says Get Help Now. Click on that. And somebody will be in contact with you within 24 hours. And please, really do look for help if you know somebody or if you're struggling this. Because we can't do this on your own. We can't do this on our own. You can't do this on your own. We have to do this with Christ. And that's what we try and help through our program here at Adult and Teen Challenge. You know, one of the, uh, I think, greatest challenges for uh individuals that are, are coming out of addiction and 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 certainly those who are uh in christ-centered recovery is is to learn how to enjoy life and have fun as a christian right um because you know even though you've come to christ and god set you free in your in your mind and i and i, I can speak to this because i can remember being there you think that uh, the only way to have fun is the way is the is it involves the things that you were doing in your addiction, right? Uh, you know the 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 hanging out with those people that cuss and drink and you know listen to uh, uh, inappropriate music and watch inappropriate things on TV. You 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 associate that with fun because you don't you haven't learned to have fun as a Christian. Right. Um, and I can tell you, man, in the, you know, it's been 28 years since I, I gave my heart and life to Christ. And uh, I, I, I had to learn how to enjoy and have fun as right. a, as a believer. And I wouldn't have it any other way now. Right. You know, I have, I have more fun now than I had then without any regrets. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's because of, the people that I choose to associate with now that allows me to have fun in the right places doing the right things. Right. Right. And that's just a lot of people think of, well, if you're a Christian, we got to follow all these rules. We can't do this. You can't do this. And and you're boring. You can't Mm -hmm. go out and do have fun. And it's not, then that's not true. No, we still have fun, but we don't have the consequences to having fun. Correct. You know, as the saying goes, you know, uh, uh, when you know, I when I came to Jesus, I didn't stop dancing. I just changed partners. Right. And and so the the great thing about it is, though, I don't wake up the next mon- morning wondering what I did last night. Right. You know, I know what I did. I enjoy what I did. There's no regrets after the fact. Uh. Uh. And 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 I can I can know in how I had fun, the fun I had pleased God. Right. Which is which should be um, the most important thing to us, right? To do what pleases God. Uh, but the scripture also lets us know that you know James said he said uh, we're drawn away of our own lust and, and enticed, and so because now I'm a Christian, uh, doesn't mean I can't be drawn back into that old lifestyle, right? It 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 it, it was a part of me, right? It, it, it it's it's I've disconnected myself from it 
but it's easy to end up allowing myself to reconnect to it. How am I drawn back to it through the wrong people? Right. That uh, that causes me to end up in the wrong places and doing the wrong things. Right. So, so you know, I can't emphasize enough the importance of being guarding yourself from that. Right. And and and, and it, it really requires some courage and some boldness. You know, I had to cut off some people uh, that 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 uh, I you know I, I still care about and still love right. and still you know uh, um, simply because they're still involved in activities and a lifestyle that I I, I no longer can allow myself to be a part right. of. And I think. As you're talking about that, having to cut yourself off, so maybe some of the hardest people to have to cut off would be family members that Correct. you were having that, doing the partying with and doing all those type things with. Correct. I mean, you have to have to go back to what we've talked about in previous podcasts is that tough love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you have to be able, you have to be able to take a stand uh, for what you believe uh, is biblically and morally right. Right. Um, regardless of who it is, it, it, even if it's your mother. You know, she's unsaved and not uh, 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 living according to scripture. And she has activity or things going on that, you know, or, uh, you know, you can't be a part of that. It's not going to please God. You got to be willing to take a stand for that. Right. Even at the even at the extent, you know, uh, 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 running the risk of them not wanting to talk to you anymore. Right. You know, I would much rather have you not talked to me anymore than to allow myself to be engaged in activity that can cause me uh, to fall back into that old lifestyle. Right. Right. I have to guard myself. Got to guard yourself. Mm -hmm. And brother, hey, that's where we're going to have to wrap up for this, this one. But if you are struggling guarding yourself, or if you know somebody that's not, and they're starting to see them starting to do that slide back into their addiction, please reach out to us at 833-462-8286 or you can visit us on the web at atctn.org and click on that get help now button and somebody will be with you to help uh, find help uh, to that's what we're here for we're helped you to help you to be able to find that help that you need yes so thank you for joining us today on mission driven this has been a production of adult and teen challenge of heartland and remember there's always hope from being free from your addictions. Yeah.